Thank you very much for those kind words of, of introduction. Um, We, we, we uh, look at business, look at biodiversity through a lens of business, which, um, and I just bumped into Professor Graham Mitchell at the door there, who I haven't seen for uh, 15 years, and um, it was, uh, we approached him to talk about uh, what we wanted to do with biodiversity, um, and he, uh, he and Sir Gus and uh, their partners spent a lot of time with us um, with uh, saying, what a novel idea, what a great idea, you know, how, how can we support you guys going forward? And um, I think uh, collaboration and partnership is, is, is a key to everything that we're doing going, going forward with, um, with biodiversity. Um, and the University of Melbourne, uh, the support that they're giving us um, has been fantastic, Professor Ari Hoffman and Dr Andrew Weeks particularly. We wouldn't be getting any of the success uh, without them. But there's a myriad of people that um, we have as partners uh, in our programs. This is, this is just a sample of them. And uh, we'll chat about each of our projects as we go and uh, the support and sharing that we do with each of those partners. Our aim is to make uh, biodiversity investable, um, whether that's uh, starting by reducing the costs and getting cost efficiencies into breeding threatened species or regenerating biodiversity, um, or the, to, the, to the other end of the scale, which we're working hard on, is to create revenue models around biodiversity so that it can help itself. Um, so uh, it, was, it was mentioned I had a, a background in, the, in, in business. Um, I, I was in the property industry for a long time. Uh, and, uh, but, but conservation was in my blood. I had a father who, uh, I grew up in Hamilton on a farm, as mentioned. I did learn to milk a cow <laughs> the old way uh, very early on. And um, my dad used to take us planting trees, fixing up gullies and and creating you know, farm corridors and mixing and learning about nature. Um, so we, we got a wonderful, wonderful start there. Um, unfortunately for him at the time, the 1967 drought really knocked him about. And um, um, it, we, we had the bank, he, well, he had the bank saying, um, you know, sell up or take his, take his second job. Fortunately for us, he took the second job. And fortunately for me, it was with the Soil Conservation Authority. And so we got involved in some of the most fascinating conservation projects I've ever seen. There was sand, green, sand dunes encroaching on wetlands that he was sort of getting into control and things like that. So we, we, we think we sort of had the best of both worlds and he won an early award. Um, so he's, he's been a big influence on me. Um, probably the, 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 the thing that happened at the time was um, uh, because it had been a bit tough on him on the way through, he, sort of, he didn't want any of us to go into farming or conservation. So. He said, I really you know you guys go get a go get a job in, in, in a world and try and get a return. But the conservation itch itch was sort of was always with me. And um, in the late nineties my wife and I bought a um, place on French Island and um, it was eighty hectares and we started our first conservation project there. French Island's a wonderful place, sixty percent national park, no, no foxes, all sorts of uh, wonderful snakes and probably a hundred different types of mosquitoes as well. <laughs> We found, uh, but that that was really the project that led led um, led me to um, Mount Rothwell, and um, uh, at Mount Rothwell, um, we've sort of we started focusing on breeding threatened species. Uh, that was that was the original aim, but then the whole greater biodiversity regeneration obviously <laughs> came into that as we started looking at how we create create cost efficiencies to make make these little guys uh, uh, be able to breed more at a, at, a, at a lower cost. Um, we worked, we worked, uh, we, well, the, the way that Mount Rothwell set up is with a, with a feral proof fence and, and clearly putting the animals back in their, in their native environment, they can breed a lot quicker. But, if, you know, there was, there was people that worked really hard to maintain a population of eastern barred bandicoots, but as we've all worked together, uh, particularly with uh, Zoo Victoria, uh, we've come up with, come up with ways to get to get the breeding happening um, very successfully and the numbers are really uh, shooting along. Um, and uh, again, thanks to Melbourne Uni, all of the genetic work and genetic advice they give us is, um, is, is critical to where we're headed. Um, so cost efficiencies in biodiversity management. Um, we've got to the stage where we're, we're learning so much about uh, what the animals bring back to helping us recover the environment and effectively uh, save us costs in, in managing the environment. Uh, for the first quite a few years, um, 
Annette and her team, Annette's here tonight. Um, I'm, I'm privileged to have them as a team running Mount Rothwell and all of the work that they're doing. And they're working really hard on managing the weeds and the rabbits and all the, all the, the fun things that come with trying to restore, restore the, the Mount Rothwell back to nature. Um, <coughs> Mount Rothwell had been a sheep farm for, uh, for well, since the early settlement, really, since the mid-1850s. Um, and these type of soils with heavy sheep grazing, they become compacted and water repellent. Um, what, happens with, uh, what happened with us is that with, we're having, inheriting soils like that, um, it's, a, it's a bonus for weeds and a bonus for erosion. They, they're, they're the real winners. So we get a heavy rainfall event and our fence would get washed down. Um, we'd get all sorts of erosion, uh, weeds would flourish uh, and it was, it was an ongoing cycle. So we're, we're sort of slowly getting on top of that, but after a few years we started to notice a change. And, and, and you can actually feel it when you walk across Mount Rothwell as the soil became more aerated. Um, so we, uh, so enter for us um, probably the Betong and the Southern Brown Bandicoot. Um, and I'm going to use some analogies of Western agriculture here, uh, but the, the Southern Brown Bandicoot will, will turn over about three and a half tonnes of soil a year. The rufous betong's turning over about two and a half tonnes of soil a year. And, and what they're doing is uh, aerating the soil and making it much more permeable for the water. And that's, what, that's why we've started um, being able to manage these flood events, as, as the soils, uh, as that has worked. The eastern bar bandicoot, um, so going back to those, those two species, for us they're like the, the plough and the discs reworking the soil. And then the eastern bar bandicoot comes along and it does hundreds of nose pokes through uh, through the soil and that allows the, the native seeds to, to set and the water to rest with that and that's how the, the germination starts to occur. So as we, as we started to get on top of the weeds, some of the native vegetation started to help look after itself. Uh, and, and so the intermingling of all of the, these guys um, uh, got, gets really interesting. Um, so then where does the eastern quoll come into the picture? Um, this is an eastern quoll at work. So these, these guys are, are helping us with the rabbit management. They're taking over the rabbit warrens, uh, which is taking away the breeding of the rabbits, which therefore helps us with some costs about managing rabbits, which has been a real issue for us going. And you can see that the native grasses that the, the quoll had collected, and we have betongs do the same. So they're sort of, they're harvesting the grasses. Um, uh, at Mount Rothwell at the moment, we've got the, those guys doing that, but the biomass management becomes another issue um, beyond uh, well, as kangaroos and wallabies probably did in, in, uh, in a prior to settlement in managing that. Um, which probably leads me to Tiverton, which is um, uh, an interesting story. So Tiverton's about a thousand hectares located down near um, um, Mortlake in Western Victoria. It's stony rise country with uh, uh, beautiful uh, rolling native grasslands. Uh, and uh, I got a call one day from Trust for Nature about it and said, would you like to have a look at doing something with this grassland? And um, we, we, we'd started thinking about how, how do we manage larger areas of native, native grassland and also how do we create the next space for uh, eastern bow bandicoots and quolls because their numbers were getting to the optimum level at, at Mount Rockwell. Um, so I called Harry who's up there, that's uh, Harry Youngman, he's a farmer from Western Victoria in the hometown where I grew up. And I spoke to Harry and said, oh, we need a bit of advice, we need to get our head together. How are we going to manage a large grassland? And uh, I've got this vision of sort of getting, putting more native animals in here. Um, he said, no worries, I've heard in New Zealand that uh, sheep do very well on native grasses if they're running on a low stocking rate. So we took the plunge together uh, and formed Tiverton and, um, and, and designed a plan there to run super fine wool sheep. Um, what we discovered there over time was that we were getting, we were topping the wool markets locally. And um, so our wool was super fine, like all super fine, good super fine wool, but the, what, what we'd found is that we grew, we grew a unique tensile strength, a consistent wool staple. Um, and, um, and the buyers were starting to pay for that. Um, the explanation of that is that the, the, the native grasses are perfect to give a consistent, uh, a consistent and diverse enough nutrient and regular nutrient range to make that strong wool. So we're starting to talk to international fashion designers now about you know, making garments out of this wool to get another, 
another level of return. Um, and um, so that, you know, there's a sheep and that was our sort of, our little, little certificate we got about when we topped the wool markets with these sheep. But, you know, this is, this is starting to look at a revenue model and, uh, you know, um, fair degree of luck in this, Harry had heard something and, uh, we, we, you know, we had a look at it and now we're getting these um, wonderful results. So, dividend in time will, um, will be um, a, a great self-funding uh, biodiversity project and effectively the sheep will be our income source um, but they'll also be our kangaroos and wallabies uh, and we've devised a crash grazing regime that can re uh, reflect how that will work and our uh, probably the easiest way for us to, 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 to talk about it is that there's a, a score that the state government use in their bush broker program and it's out of 100 and when we started with Tiverton it was uh, 38 and the last measurement was 62 which, you know, it, it's very, it's been quite hard for us at Mount Rothwell over the years to get that type of jump. So, ultimately now we'll probably end up bringing some light grazing and, and controlled grazing back to Mount Rothwell of, to get some income be, so we can manage that, um, that biomass. Um, through, through this whole uh, period as we were chatting, um, um, I'd, I'd, I'd been talking to Zoos Victoria about the idea and we, we work closely on a number of programs and um, they very kindly offered to um, provide us with some funding to, to fence the entirety of Tiverton. Uh, and, 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 and that's the boundary of it. So that's uh, 1,000 hectares, 2,500 acres. Uh, and they've also um, invested in uh, Maremma dogs and we're going to trial uh, guardian dogs with bandicoots and sheep outside the fence as well. Um, and, uh, you know, that's going to be... A, well, the whole project's really interesting and that's going to be a, another interesting way. It's a... Uh, we're just trying to start to think about how we can get the numbers up. In order next year, we'll be releasing Eastern Bell Bandicoots and Eastern Quolls into Tiverton, and I think, we'll, I think we'll get a new definition of um, mixed farming. So that the, um, it, it's going to be um, a fantastic thing to do to have them all, all roaming together and seeing how it works. Um, another financial model we we've devised is it's sort of come out of the property background, but years ago I got asked to help... Um, with some work on this uh, project called Wyndham Harbour and uh, we devised that to be a, a carbon positive program. Um, so the advice that, that we were giving them was to say, well, make it carbon positive but also can we do a big planting in the catchment which is relevant to where Wyndham Harbour is. Um, so fast forward so to 10 years and um, the other, I guess the other thing we try and look at is how we get the best leverage out of the funds that, that, that we, we can get, whether it's return or whether it's uh, philanthropic grants or government grants or, or, and all which help us um, a hell of a lot. Fortunately, this, this, this uh, farm came up for sale right between Werribee Gorge and the Brisbane Ranges and it's a really interesting corridor linkage that we've been looking at for a while because you know, we can reconnect 13,000 hectares of biodiversity by by doing that. So at the, we've just uh, direct seeded most of that um, 550 hectares uh, with, uh, under the guidance of Trust for Nature. They've been choosing the species so that we can match up with how the rest of that works. So the financial model here is it's funded by a uh, carbon offset um, and on the back of doing that and selecting the site then um, the CMA offered to put some of their 20 million trees money towards this so we could plant the balance of it. Uh, and then we've been chatting to the council about how we divide that up into some rural living lots because all of these areas need, are a bit neglected as parks, need sort of management and care to form a land, a land care group up around how this project will work. So the investors that came in, um, you know, we've, 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 been, we've had wonderful support from impact investors who, who are interested in the models that we're trying to, to roll out and, uh, and demonstrate a return and make any, fund, any philanthropic or government grant money go, go a lot further than it has. Um, we, we've got um, another, another project which we're just launching now which is sort of stepping up in size. So this one's 5,000 hectares um, up on the Loddon River near Serpentine. Um, we we uh, again support of, of wonderful investors for this project but we're looking here at uh, Land has been cropped for many years. Um, there's some bits of remnant biodiversity and trust for nature, we've got a couple of blocks here. So we're just starting to design up um, these corridor linkages. We, we need to get some more land in to join those up and then, uh, and, and then get the river, uh, the, the connection back to the river happening. 
Um, it's a pretty comprehensive uh, sustainability project as well. We're going to convert it all to organic land. We've set up a deal with Veolia, which will bring all the, the uh, compost waste out of the Buller landfill at Melton, um, and, um, and, and we'll set up irrigation food production in the relevant spots here so that um, we can sort of have a healthy food, healthy biodiversity. Up here we'll set up as a sanctuary uh, and, and, and we're just uh, talking and it's just having a look at what species we might work with up there and, um, and, and Andrew Weeks has been up there recently as well. So um, that, that's the sort of direction we're headed um, and um, we, we, we are trying to make change. We are trying to change the way that um, biodiversity is looked at. The, the, the basic premise of that is that um, it's probably not for all us converted people. Um, it's for people who we need to get uh, to see biodiversity in a different light. And if, if we can get them to uh, see that it's investable, uh, then we think we can have a massive scale up of the preservation of um, biodiversity. Thank you.